Yo, what's going on guys, this is Burn again, and in this tutorial we're going to set up and connect to our Mongo database. So the first thing we're going to do is install Mongoose, and Mongoose is how we're going to tell Node.js to communicate with our Mongo database. So npm install mongoose and save that to our JSON file. So I've created some nested folders, server and models, and I'm going to create a new folder called a customer .js. Now the reason I'm using customers is I've created a project snippet section of the website where I'm going to put uh, video projects that we're doing during these tutorials. So this tutorial is going to be adding a customer object to our database and then returning that customer object to the user. So instead of our customer JS, create a variable of mongoose and that's going to equal require mongoose. Next we're going to create a variable called schema and that's going to be equal to require mongoose.schema C-H-E-M-A and then finally we'll create a variable called customer schema and that will equal mongoose.schema and then inside this we're going to create our customer object. So now let's create what our customer is going to look like in our database. So we're, it's going to have a first name and that is going to be a string. It's also going to have a last name, a string. It's going to have a phone number. Uh, we'll just do phone. And that's going to be a string as well. And then um, we're going to create an address object. And inside the address object, it's going to have a street. Um, again, a string. It's going to have a uh, city of string, um, state string, zip. We're just going to do string as well because it may have dashes. And I think that's it. So now we can go ahead and save that file. So to make our schema available to other parts of our project, we need to do module.exports and we are going to export um, mongoose.model we're going to name it uh, customer and it is going to be exporting the customer schema and so now we can save it so i've set up another new folder config folder and added a database.js file in here we're going to do module.exports and it's going to export an object with a url and this is where we're going to set up the URL of our server. Uh, so we're going to do mongodb um, local host and then just uh, my app. So there, I'll just put a link uh, below on how to set up a Mongo database to actually run the server itself because uh, that's outside the scope of this video. So now let's connect to our Mongo database from our server. So go to our server.js file. We're going to create a new variable called mongoose, uh, and that equals require mongoose. And then below here, we're going to do mongoose.connect. And then actually, right above here, we're going to create a var um, config db, and that's going to equal require. Um, dot slash oops dot slash uh, server config database dot js and then down here we're gonna do connect to config dot url or config db sorry and then we'll save that Okay, since I'm uh, using Cloud9, I did make one little mistake. We're not using localhost. Uh, so the URL is mongoide uh, and then plus the process environment.ip. So now once uh, you save that, you can do node server and hopefully it runs without any errors, which it does. So now let's create the API that we're going to use to connect to our customer database. So I've created a new routes folder and an API.js file inside of that. I'm going to do module dot uh, oops module dot exports 
equals, um, let's see, function that takes in a router. Okay, so in here we're going to create a router.post and that is when we're going to post to slash customer in our API. Um, it's going to take in a function with the request and response objects. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, create a new variable called customer and that equals a new customer. And what a customer is is we'll actually have to define it up above var customer equals require um, and then give it the link to our model so it is models um, customer and so down here our customer dot first name is equal to request dot body dot first name it takes it when the post object gets sent to the server, it requests to, uh, it places uh, the form basically in request.body. So we can get it from request.body.firstName. Then we're going to just repeat this for last name. Maybe it would be faster to type last name. And then customer.phone is equal to request.body.phone customer.address.street uh, um, will equal request.body.address.street and let's just copy that because these are getting long so street um, city state and zip and so we'll just change these city state and zip now what we're going to do is say customer dot save and then give it a callback function if there's an error uh, so if error throw the error otherwise uh, respond uh, dot JSON um, of the customer object. So we'll just send. So when they post uh, a customer object to our server, we're going to respond back with that customer object after it's saved in the database. So let's save that. So actually, I think it's better to put the customer response in the callback. So we'll get it. So customer.save and it takes in a function with an error and then returns the data. And then we'll, uh, what we'll do here is respond.json with our data. Um, and then we can cancel this stuff out. We'll save that. So there's only one thing to do to make our API go live. We're going to go to our server.js file, create a new variable called the API. And that's going to equal express.router. And then below that, require. Um, and then we're going to give it the link to our routes API. So uh, server routes api.js. Or actually, we don't even need the JS. And then we're going to give it API to give it the router. And then um, app.use API and API. So this says uh, anytime anybody navigates to the API directory, use this router to route traffic. Um, so they're going to go to slash API. Then when they get to here, uh, when they post to the customer uh, link, then it will execute this function. So just to test to see if it's working properly, I'm going to comment these lines out. Create a new customer dot first name equals test. Then I'm going to change this to a get request instead of a post just to test on cloud nine. I'm going to restart our server and refresh here. And now we can see it got posted to the database. First name is test and it gave us a unique identifier in our Mongo database. And that's it.
So that's it for this tutorial. We've gone ahead and posted an object to our database using Mongoose. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to access the database from our Angular front end uh, to post customer data and get data back from the server. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. So that's it for this video times three.